Hello, everybody. Welcome back to all my viewers. I have been thinking a lot about you. Some of you have sent me some really nice notes. I appreciate that. And welcome to all my new viewers who might have found me. Uh, my name is Sean Glidden, and I am the host of Knit 56. It's been about a month since I've podcasted. A lot has been happening around here. I had been planning on a trip to Louisiana, but my wife got sick with pneumonia and since she has asthma it was turned out to be a very serious adventure i think she's on the rise yesterday she had some fluid taken out of her lungs yes it's been a month and she's still recovering but it's the way it goes and i think she's getting better fingers crossed so since it's been a month i have a lot of knitting news I'm so excited. I uh, spent a weekend volunteering at Vogue Knitting Live, Vogue Knitting Live, when they were here in Minneapolis. Um, I met some great people that organized that event. I had so much fun with them. Uh, one of my favorite things that I did was I worked in the fitting booth, and I got to work with Deborah Newton. She is great. She uh, she wrote a book about knitting. That fits. I'm afraid I don't have the name of the book, but Deborah Newton, and she had these forms with 11 different measurements that would help you make a sweater that fit your body. And so I spent, I think over the weekend, six hours measuring people. And it was so interesting, just measuring and writing down measurements, and everybody is completely different. It's kind of crazy that we have one size for sweaters or a standardization, and um, I really encourage you to look up uh, Debbie Newton or uh, who's, um, there's another woman who does a lot of fitting, shoot, I'm going to edit that out, because I can't remember her name, Amy, Amy, Amy somebody, uh, anyway, I encourage you, any chance you get to uh learn about how to shape a sweater to fit your body and what measurements to take to, to to learn about it because it makes a huge difference. One example is the sweater I am wearing. So I um I finished this. I kind of don't like the way the white turned out, but the flower still shows up. Um yay look at I love the tulips and this and so I I took my bottom measurements and I made this to fit me basically. I have really large arm, you know, arms right here. I'm so strong. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I ran out of blue, so I didn't know how to finish it. So I put this little design on the cuffs and on the bottom of the sweater, and then I um, used gray to finish it with a little bit one one row and a cast off in the maroon which i kind of like how that turned out that's not a very good shot you can see my belt under there but so one thing i did in shaping this sweater was i knit this out of chickadee from quince and co and i really like this yarn it's really warm and was so much fun to knit with I couldn't stop knitting it. I mean, I really, I just loved working with this yarn, Chickadee from Quince & Co. And um, so I put darts in the middle here. In, I don't even think you can see them. Right here, darts. Instead of doing side shaping, put darts in the front, darts in the back. I put more darts in the back because my back is narrower than my front. So my back has more darts. And then at a certain point, I increased above the ribbing for my hips to go over my hips. So it's shaped but not tight fitting. And um, I love it. It's super warm. It's really warm. I like how the pattern turned out. I really love the tulip. This I'm sort of okay with. I. I did a lot of increasing right like on the plain rows is where I increased to create the shaping of the yoke. And I'm not sure I like how the gray and the white section worked out. I would do that different next time. But here you see here is a flower motif. But when I look at it all I see is the white. So 
That's the one thing I didn't like about this sweater. Anyway, when I was at Vogue Knitting Live, I took a class with Mary Jane Mucklestone. And it was so great. She was so energetic and so fun. And it was really, she was very lively and it was really fun being in her class. And she talked about not only, she, she, she went around and asked everyone about their knitting and their experience. And the class was Contemporary Color Knitting. And um, of course, there was, I think, 20 some people in the class and everyone had a different range of experience. And she, to my amazement, was able to match everyone's goals in that class. I wanted to learn about how to put colors together. I feel like I want to know more about that. I love working with texture, but I am not so good or confident when it comes to color. And uh, she had a couple really good things to say about that. One was squinting, that if you squint, when you're looking at colors and you're trying to put them together, you can see the value. And if they are, if, if, you, if when you squint and they kind of run together, then you know that you don't want one of those to be a foreground and one to be a background because they will just look the same to the eye, even if one's red and one's blue. So that was really interesting. Kind of, sort of like my green and blue right here. Okay, well, they don't, anyway. So, and other people, she went around and individually taught how to use color with two hands, to, if that was what they wanted. Um, she was just great. She helped people with tension. She talked about carrying yarn. She covered, I think she satisfied everyone's needs in a three hour class. It was amazing to me. She handed out a pattern of Wild Goose Chase. This was not the pattern she handed out, but I was working with this yarn that was left over from previous projects. And um, I just had that little bit of purple on the top. And so what I did was I squinted <laughs> and figured out how to, what order to put the colors in. Start. I've got the gray there, green there. Pretty much used up the gray. This yarn, oh, so this is a cowl. This yarn is from a local store to me. It's in, well... It's 50 miles away, but it's an educational farm located in Minatrista, Minnesota. It's a western suburb of the Twin Cities. And um, they, they invite school children out to this farm that was donated to, this, to the county park system. And they have livestock, they have chickens, they ha and they raise sheep, and they have, they have yarn. And they, they turn the wool into yarn at a local mill, so it's local sheep from a local mill and a woman that lives not too far from there does the dyeing. So it's 100% local and I love it. Anyway, that was part of my Vogue Knitting Live experience. I'll show you my cowl again. I really like it. Um, and of course, there's a marketplace at Vogue Knitting Live. Let me get rid of that. And I bought some yarn at a company called Apple Fiber Studio. It's from Bellingham, Washington State. And this woman dyes all her own yarn. And I got this lovely, what does she call this? Mountains are calling. And that looks pretty true. Those colors are pretty true on the screen. Um, it's a large skein. It's a sock fingering weight, four ply, 437 yards, 100 grams, and it's uh, super fine alpaca, merino, and nylon. It's, um, yeah. And I also got some brown. Of course, I started knitting with it already. This, look at this color. Hoo, hoo, hoo. You can see all those lovely browns in there. This is a little bit darker than is showing up. What is this color called? If I can find the tag. It's called um, something espresso. Drive through espresso. So it's a little bit darker than that. The light from the window is brightening it up, but you can see all the different colors. So, I have been working on a shawl with these two things, two yarns. 
that is similar to this one. And I'm going to call it glass of wine shawl. My, a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine. Because it's super easy. It's easy late night knitting. knitting. You don't have to pay attention to anything. Um, it's easy to count to know what you're doing. So this one... I did out of some yarn that was left over. It's very long. It's mostly garter stitch. It's garter stitch and solid. So the the blue and purple stripes are one it's a skein and a half of a yarn that I don't know. I didn't have a label with it. Um but the striping is just what happened in the yarn. And then there's a, this blue, this dark navy blue is from Black Mountain. What is it called? It's a yarn store in Her Huron, Wisconsin. Um, Blackberry Hills, I think it's called. And it's a, it's a nice lace weight. So there's one that I have finished. And... Um, I have a test. I have one test knitter. If anybody who's watching this wants to test knit it, contact me at Lulu Gal on Ravelry. Here's another one I did. This yarn is a little bit heavier weight. Oh gosh, it's so pretty, right? I had more blue than white, but because the white is the stripes, when I come to the end, there's lots of white. So this is with just two colors. And once again, the, the eyelet section is done with the lighter color. As like then the blue one, the lighter color was um, the eyelet section. Oh, I just see an end here I have to cut off. Anyway, <laughs> and then the, this one with my mountains and espresso yarn, I'm doing the opposite. So I have the dark yarn is the eyelets. Oh, it's really hard to see in this light. I'm sorry. With something not solid behind it. Is that better? That's better. So I'm, I'm not even through one skein of the mountain um, with this. Anyway, it's really hard to see with all the color in the background, but... They're real, this yarn is really nice with this alpaca and nylon. I really like it. So that's working up really fast. That is called Have a Glass of Wine and Knit. That's what it is. Have a Glass of Wine and Knit. The other thing I've been working on, and this is some bamboo that I purchased in Germany, is this shawl. And both sides are the same. And it's more blue than is turning up. So I'm, there's a slip stitch on each side. It's worked in garter. But I really like shawls to be the same on both sides. It's not that important, I don't think, but I like it. So this is um, a seven, eight stitch repeat. And um, it's going to be long and narrow with a with a with a slope on the bottom so it's not going to be very deep um this yarn is really heavy which is why i decided to use a slip stitch in it that because it would help i think hold its shape with the slip stitch and then i've got a really great um bottom way i'm going to finish it off i'm really excited i can't wait to do it so that's in progress. And then I've got some other projects that I finished. This podcast is not going to be very long. I don't have any history. I've just been knitting, knitting, knitting. Um, so, Debbie Bliss. Soho. I have a bunch of it in these variegated colors. And I've been knitting fingerless mitts. It is Christmas, you know. Almost Christmas time. Almost present time. So I knit these lovely things. There, you can't even see the cable. There's a cable and they're ribbed. 
because ribbing will fit anybody. So here they are. Can you, there you can kind of see the cable. It's like a... I'm going to put um, some beads. I got some beads I'm going to put on here, some white beads. And these worked up super fast. I can't believe they're not, it's not really showing up. And then I made these. These are uh, tutu rib. And they look short, but look at, they fit my wide hand. Look at that, from this to this. So basically they'll fit just about any size hand. Tutu ribbing, it's awesome. And then... I knit these fingerless mitts. And this has a 4-4 four, four rib. And every four rows, I would either do two rows in purl, since it's knitting around, or two rows in knit right there. And uh, create this fun little pattern. Um, and then for the thumb, in, for the thumb gusset, on thumbs, oftentimes they say to um, increase on both sides of the gusset every other row. Well, I worked these from the bottom up and right here, let's see if you can see it. I increased every row on one side. And so the front, there's no interruption is this this four this where is it how about this let's see that's the increase side so this just goes up the thumb and continues to go up the mitten and then on the other side is the increase right there and that's the palm side or it doesn't really matter it could be the palm side or not. So all the thumbs on these were knit. That's how I did the gusset. Just on one side, I increased every row. And I did this hat, which is really big, and it has a turtle on it. I hope it shows up. Can you see the turtle? If I did this again, I would do it with... This would fit a guy, someone with a really big head. Look at that cute turtle. So... There we go. And the turtle kind of pooches out a little bit. It's hard to see. There's his head right here. But that's kind of fun. I think it shows up better actually when it's on the body. Poor turtle. And, oh, that looks silly. <laughs> and this lovely ribbed Powell. I've been into ribs lately. I think ribs fit anybody, anytime. So the rib, and I just made it up. I mean, really, I just made it up. I've got ribs. Let's see, it's a two, it's a rib over, or I mean, it's a cable over four stitches. And here it goes in, and then they separate and they go out. It's easier to see on this other one. This one I made a little bit longer because I wanted the repeat to work. Oh, yeah, see, you can see it much better on this one. This is knit out of Plymouth, Plymouth, uh, Galway. It's the wool. It's not Encore. It's, it's Plymouth wool. Worsted weight. And isn't that cool? The way the cables go in and out. Yeah, I really liked this. And I'll probably write a pattern for it, but I haven't done it yet. I've been having too much fun knitting. So that goes all the way around. So this one I did the same way. It's hard to tell in the variegation. But I put, le I put two fewer rows in the middle. So this one, you can see right here, there's... How how far apart? Let's see. These two cables are right here. Ah, sorry. So there's that little extra rib in there. And this one, it's there is not that. 
the center cables just come right together right there. The same as they do on the edge. I don't know. Um, you know, this yarn is bulkier. And so it's wider than the blue one, even though it's got fewer stitches. It can be, they both can be stretched out. So I just, I did this um, back and forth with a provisional cast on and ugh, now I have yarn in my mouth and then grafted it together. And I think I figured out a really cool way to talk to myself about grafting. I can't even find it on this one. I made a few mistakes on this one, on the blue one. It's not as tidy as it could be. It's not bad. It doesn't bother me. But I figured it out. On the front needle, when you're grafting and you're doing knit and purl, it's easy to always do knit. But when I was doing the knit and the purl, I was doing, I had my needle. And the first stitch on each needle, whether it was the front or the back, I went into the front of the knit stitch. So if it's, you know, you have two needles, two needles, and let's say this is the back one and this is the front one. If this is a purl stitch, I would come in from this way. If it's a knit stitch, I'd go in from that way. And the same on this. So no matter what needle, if the first stitch, the first stitch, I would go into the front of the knit side. And then the second stitch on that same needle, and then I'd drop that stitch, the second stitch on the needle, I would go into the back of the purl, of the knit, no matter which direction it was facing. So I didn't think about keeping a front, front, back, back, front, front, back, back kind of pattern on grafting. I had a, a needle and a loose end. And that, see, and that worked. It worked perfect on this one. So once again, I did. I'm talking this out as much for myself as you guys. On the No matter which needle, front or back, the first stitch, the one that was going to be dropped off after I put the needle through and the thread, the first stitch I always entered from the front of the knit side. So I'd find whichever was the front of the knit side and go in through that. Then drop it off the needle, and on that same needle, the second stitch, I'd go in through the back of the knit stitch or the front of the purl stitch, depending on how you want to look at it. Back of the knit or the front of the purl. And that needle, that stitch would stay on the needle. Then I'd go to the back needle, and I'd go through the front of the knit side and the back of the knit side. And it worked. It worked great. I, I didn't even have to really, once I figured that out, I didn't have to think about it. And I seriously cannot find where I grafted this. It worked out so well. These have both been blocked. I think... Maybe it's right there. I, th I think the graft was right there. But, I mean, you can barely tell. So, those I've been working on. I got one more call. I have one more call right here. And what did I do on this one? Oh, see, I don't know why I did such braid work, cable work on this yarn. You can't even see it. See, I put that nice cable. It's like two little half circles. And the rest of the work was 4-4 four, four rib, which I changed after eight rows, did 16 rows, and then changed at eight rows at the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it has this little ridgy kind of look, which is cool, isn't it? That would make a cool cowl. Just do 4-4 four, four rib. And every 16 rows, move over two stitches. So where's that cable? Let's see if I can show that cable in the light. Oh, yeah. See? There it is over here by my finger. So that's what I have. I just had to get something out quick because I've been thinking about people who watch me. And um, my viewers, I appreciate you. Few, though you are in number. I appreciate you. And um, 
I really wanted to get something out quick. I have a huge week ahead of me again. So, um, I've just been knitting away, taking care of Ellen, not going out because there's some, she needed some attending to, and working on my have a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine. Oh, yes. Mm. So, if anybody wants to try knitting this, let me know. Personal message me on Ravelry at Lulu Gal, and I'll get it to you. It takes, um, you know, probably eight to nine hundred yards, four and a half, four hundred fifty yards of two each of two colors, or more of one. It'd be a great way to use up old fingering yarn. It's um, there is a there is a method to my madness, but it's pretty darn simple. Start at one end. And the, the plain garter stitch rows just get bigger by one row every... Anyway, ooh, it smells good. Um, thanks for watching, y'all. I also finished Gary's sweater, and I took a picture of him wearing it. I don't have it, because I gave it to him. And it fits perfect. So I took a bunch of pictures of me taking it apart. Okay, if you remember, or maybe I didn't talk about it. Maybe I did. It was too short. So I took it apart just above the ribbing because I didn't want to do, oh, it was like almost 300 stitches around. And I didn't want to redo all that ribbing. So what I did was I took it apart above the ribbing, put that on a needle. I The top part was on a needle. Those were live stitches on another long circular needle. Then I went back to the rib section and I knit up. And I also did short rows in the front. So there was more length in the front um, to cover his belly, less length in the back so it didn't bunch up over his hips, you know. If it was too long, it, how that kind of bunches up there. So it just fits him so well. I can't even believe it. I think I added, I added another inch of ribbing and I added four inches in the front and two inches in the back. And it turned out so great. And then I grafted them together. And you can't even tell. You can't even tell. It looks perfect. So I got I have some still photos of the different pro the project in those different stages that I will insert into the podcast. Yep. And I will focus a little bit more on doing some getting some history to you guys next time. I just came across some more knitting books that a friend gave me that have a bunch of interesting, a lot of interesting stuff. And I am starting to play, or they're starting to have music at Como Dockside. So if any of you are local to this area, I know some of you are, there's at Como Lake, they have a restaurant there and they serve Cajun food or Southern food. So I'm organizing a weekly music there from 12 to 2. I'm not always playing. I'm going to play sometimes. And, um, but some local musicians, good local musicians who play Louisiana music, are going to be playing every Saturday from 12 to 2 at Como Dockside. So come out and see us. If I'm there, introduce yourself. I'd love to meet you in person. Um, Otherwise, take care. Yeah, why was this? It was a long time since I podcasted. Ellen got sick. There was the election, which really threw me for a loop. Held me down for a couple days, a couple weeks, and then Thanksgiving, which my family calls a harvest meal. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving. But, um, so, two families, two families in town, which is a lot of time. I went, Ellen and I went, well, I went to my family. Ellen was still sick. We went to Ellen's family. A lot of family time. Got some knitting done, but not time for podcasting or organizing a podcast. So anyway, thanks for sticking in there with me. And um, I hope to see you somewhere soon. Or show me your knitting. Join my, join my group. Yeah, join the group on Knit56 and post your knitting. I think um, 
Oh, there's another end right there. Hmm. I'll um, maybe start a link. I want to see what people are knitting for Christmas presents for their family and friends. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Promise it won't be a month this next time.